Hello everyone. Cell, the functional unit of life. Cell, its function always amazes us. And the cell death is even more interesting. We have heard about necrosis, we have heard about apoptosis, we have heard about necroptosis, a combination of both necrosis and apoptosis. We also have heard about pyroptosis, which basically is a inflammation and apoptosis. Welcome to today's lecture on which I will talk about a yet new another new form that is called as ferroptosis. Yes, you heard it correct. Ferroptosis. Something which is new and how a cell will actually face a ferroptosis. What are the basic mechanisms of ferroptosis and what is the clinical importance? So in this video, I'll talk about all these features and tell you what and how ferroptosis, a new form of cell death and is now coming up, right? So what exactly is ferroptosis? Let's understand this process. To make it simple for you, let me just give you a basic understanding of what exactly is this term called as ferroptosis. The term ferroptosis, if you look at this word, you'll get to know that this basically is a cell death. But the cell death has a ferrop. That means it is actually, it's actually a iron. It's actually is a iron dependent, iron dependent pathway of cell death, pathway of cell death. The basic thing that you must understand is, yes, it is iron induced cell death, but what is the basic reason, mechanism by, by lipid peroxidation? Now, when you understand lipid peroxidation, you will understand, yes, it will lead to the cell membrane or plasma membrane damage. So, basically what happens, excessive, remember this, excessive intracellular iron, excessive intracellular iron, I am writing it just as FE, this induces a lot number of reactive oxygen species called as ROS. So iron will induce the reactive oxygen species and exhaust and will exhaust all the glutathione induced antioxidant mechanisms which you remember we have read this as GSSG or GSH. So this will exhaust the glutathione this is very very important glutathione glutathione antioxidant mechanisms okay so please understand few important things about this cell death it is talking about a iron inducing reactive oxygen species and this is depleting all the glutathione it is exhausting or depleting and this leads to this leads to a cell lipid peroxidation and eventually cell death it causes unchecked it causes unchecked checked lipid peroxidation and this lipid peroxidation guys this lipid peroxidation causes membrane dysfunction it causes membrane which membrane yes the plasma membrane the plasma membrane dysfunction including the lipid and protein interaction the ion transport the fluidity everything is affected and this causes complete loss of membrane permeability permeability and this leads to a cell death a cell death looking like necrosis okay looking like necrosis and actually you you simply know that whenever you talk about the reactive oxygen species you'll always understand it is always about a necrosis okay so let's understand what brings upon this unique mechanism what brings upon this unique mechanism please understand the cell death is like necrosis the reason is increased iron inducing reactive oxygen species we must also understand what are the before we understand the mechanisms yes what are the electron microscopic findings em findings in the ferroptosis basically it causes all the mitochondrial damage it leads to loss of mitochondrial cristi loss of mitochondrial cristis it leads to the outer membrane of the mitochondrial rupture okay mitochondrial outer membrane rupture it may lead to increased mitochondrial amorphous densities mitochondrial amorphous densities which actually if you remember these all are the finding of irreversible injuries but let's understand what is the basic mechanism of this unique cell death what is the basic mechanism and whether this has any clinical implication or not so when we get something new we are mostly worried or we are mostly thinking about what is the basic you know uh, actual finding or the clinical importance that any of this 
cell death can have. Let's first understand the basic mechanism of cell death. It's very, very interesting. It's very interesting. Think what happens? Let's assume this is a cell. Okay, this is actually a cell. Okay, and just to make it a double membrane, so that it looks like a plasma membrane, I'm just making a double membrane, which actually is den denoting a plasma membrane of the cell. Okay, now see, there are some, uh, you know, uh, transporters which help the cysteine molecule to basically enter inside and it also helps the growth hormone molecule to exit outside. So, this type of transporter which allows the cysteine amino acid to enter inside, okay, cysteine amino acid to enter inside why because cysteine if you remember this is the one will basically uh, convert to glutathione so gsh now this transporter this transporter guys this transporter is often called as the slc slc 3a2 slc 3a2 okay slc 3a2 and this also has one more slc slc 7a1 now what happens because of this unique mechanisms while the gsh is being formed the gsh if you remember it can transport or can transport to gssg that is the oxidized form oxidized form by a unique enzyme called as glutathione peroxidase the gpx i'm writing as a short form of glutathione peroxidase okay peroxidase so, what is the unique mechanism? So, this GF, GPX, that being, I am calling as glutathione peroxidase, will convert the reduced form of glutathione, that is GSH, to the oxidized form called as GSHG. While, because of this, there is one more change that happens, there is one more change that happens because of this, and that is, it also, it also converts the peroxidides, the peroxides, that is OOH, into alcohol OH. As you all remember, the OOH is actually a peroxide. Okay, this is peroxide. And this will convert to an alcohol and this will prevent the free radical injury. However, however, sometimes what happens, sometimes what happens, there is an inhibition of so-called SLC by some drugs. I'll talk about that. And that decreases system, that decreases GSH or there are some drugs which can inhibit the GPX also. There can some drug which can inhibit GPX also. Now this increase in the OOH, this will cause the increase in the reactive oxygen species and that will lead to ferroptosis. This increase in the OH, OOH, this is the one which leads to ferroptosis because of very high free radical species, because of very high free radical species. Also, the same thing can also be done by, there are some more receptors here which is actually directly inducing the iron, like the transferrin receptors. So if I draw this transferrin receptor in a different way, this is how a transferrin receptor will look like. This is how this actually is a transferrin, transferrin receptor. Obviously, you all will remember that transferrin receptors allow the Fe3 plus to enter the cell. The Fe3 plus enters the cell. Now, this with the help of a steep molecule, S-T-E-A-P, it will change to Fe2 plus molecule. So now you see the iron has increased in the cell. This increase in iron, iron increases reactive oxygen species, which can also lead to ferroptosis. Which can also, this can also lead to the ferroptosis. Remember, guys, not only this, this also one more mechanism which can lead to ferroptosis in a cell, and that is a PUFA, polyunsaturated fatty acid. So remember, there's some one more mechanism that is called as PUFA, in this PUFA mechanism, this P-U-F-A, the PUFA often will convert, this PUFA will convert to the, uh, I'll say, a phosphatidyl ethylenamine, that is an oxidized form of PUFA, it is called as P-U-F-A, P-E, and this increase in the PUFA can also lead to ferroptosis. So what is happening, ultimately you see, all these three are eventually causing ferroptosis, which is increase in the iron. Now, we must understand how are we correlating this? How are we correlating this? See, and what are the clinical implications? Because there are some, there are some, uh, I'll say, enzymes which converts the PUFA into the phosphatidyl ethylenamine, that is called as PUFA PE. And that is the, there are some enzymes acting here, and this enzyme is LPCAT3. LPCAT3. Now, let's understand. What are the basic reasons when the 
when this thing that is ferroptosis will increase one of them can be a inhibition one of them can be a direct inhibition of this receptor here this one so if some drug is able to inhibit this it will increase the ferroptosis some drugs like elastin elastin this is a chemo drug it's a chemotherapy drug it is helpful in treatment of some cancers along with this along with this sulfosalazine sulfa salazine okay so this will inhibit the uh, slc 7a1 and this will decrease the cysteine decreasing cysteine will decrease gsh and will again cause increase in the reactive oxygen species will causing the ferroptosis one more way is to inhibit the gpx the gpx can be inhibited or the gpx can be destroyed okay the gpx inhibition is by a unique you know it's a drug called as rsl3 again these are new things and everything new is important right this rsl3 is ras selectable lethal marker it is ras selective ras selective lethal lethal small molecule 3 small molecule 3 so yes it's a uh, you know a bit confusing but that is what the rsl3 stands for can also be inhibited by this can also this gpx can also be inhibited by a, a different drug called as fin 56 fin 56 fin 56 and this lcat this can be inhibited by okay this can increase this can be inhibited by the vitamin e or the ferrostatin ferrostatin vitamin e and ferrostatin this can inhibit lp cat 3 lp cat 3 the entry of this iron can be inhibited by deferoxamine so dfo it can be inhibited by d ferroxamine d ferroxamine so my question now is once you have understood this few things can we just simply uh, you know can we simply have that uh, courage to stay say which of these mechanisms will increase ferroptosis which of them can increase ferroptosis obviously see among them which of them will increase ferroptosis so obviously elastin subsalazine will increase it inhibition of ras and the fin3 this will okay increase ferroptosis but if you'll see if you are able to inhibit this lp cat3 this will decrease the PUFA EPE and that will actually decrease ferroptosis. So, this will decrease ferroptosis and also deferoxamine will also decrease ferroptosis. Now, what is the clinical implication? Does it have any clinical implication? We understand whenever there is increase in RN in a cell, it can lead to a cell death, can lead to cell death by ferroptosis. There is a precise mechanism why sometimes in inflammation you are never 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 giving iron to a patient so if a patient has inflammation going on or you want to decrease inflammation you will always decrease the iron in the patient because when you give decreased iron to the patient the chances of ferroptosis decreases the chances of cell death actually also decreases now i'll tell you what are the diseases in which ferroptosis has been shown to have a very very important role to play so uh, a recent article from the cell gives you some uh, diseases which you must know so this was published by lee et al in this uh, nature's article of 2020 from which we have just taken out this so this is a ferroptosis and a various you know diseases in which ferroptosis has a role to play are some uh, nervous system disorders like neurodegenerative disease like parkinson's amyotrophic uh, lateral sclerosis there is a Huntington's disease, there is Alzheimer's disease and apart from this, as you see there, there is a stroke, there is traumatic brain injuries, okay, in pancreas, there is pancreatic cancer, type 1 diabetes, in kidney, there is AKI, ischemia, reperfusion injury, clear RCC, there is lot number of tumors, there is adrenal uh, carcinoma, there is lung cancer, there is GI cancer, there is liver uh, diseases, including liver cancers, there is heart may, there is ischemia, reperfusion injury, so all of these disease has been linked to increase in the iron so now we have got to know why does increase in iron causes the problem the reason is the increase in iron increases reactive oxygen species and that ros increasing can cause cell death by ferroprocess well when you know this 
can we go a step ahead yes you can so you can go a step ahead by stating that if you are able to give this drugs so this drug sorry this drugs like vitamin e ferrostatin vitamin e ferrostatin the defloxamine should have a decreased effect on ferroptosis and therefore should have some therapeutic role to play isn't it so i just write here what are the drugs which can decrease ferroptosis as we know today so drugs which decreases ferroptosis remember this are the vitamin e and as you know it has an anti oxidant mechanism now you get to know how does it have a role to play vitamin e there is the ferrostatin and there is dfo that is d ferroxamine so all of these three drugs are the recently approved fda approved drugs which have some role to play in decreasing all those various cluster of diseases which have a important cell death by ferroptosis dexol was a scientist who actually coined this term ferroptosis thinking there is increase in iron there is cell death let's combine the name and hence he came with the idea ferroptosis so what should you know it's a iron dependent pathway of cell death due to lipid peroxidation because of lipid peroxidation the plasma membrane gets damaged that causes decrease in the permeability and eventually causing cell death by a mechanism morphologically looking like necrosis i hope i was able to justify this topic for apoptosis do uh, share this video like comment and subscribe to the my channel and i'm very sure we'll go a long ahead and understanding various other upcoming things in the subject of medicine thank you take care and god bless you all